Squamous cell carcinoma. Squamous cell carcinoma is classically associated with a central location of origin arising most often from the segmented bronchi where smoke is most concentrated when inhaled. However, squamous cell carcinoma of the lung can also be seen in the periphery of the lung. Squamous cell carcinoma of the lung is the most common type of lung cancer in male smokers. Smoking is the biggest risk factor. Histologically, squamous cell carcinoma of the lung exhibits characteristics that are common to all squamous cell carcinomas in the body. The key cellular features include squamous keratin pearls, which stem from abundant keratinization by the malignant squamous cells and intercellular bridges, the desmosomes. Three genetic mutations are commonly seen in squamous cell carcinoma of the lung, P53, P16, and EGFR. Of all the lung carcinoma types, squamous cell carcinoma shows the greatest frequency of P53 mutations. This is partly attributable to the large carcinogen load preceding the development of this cancer. The marker of squamous cell carcinoma are cytokeratin, P40, and P63. The gross appearance of squamous cell carcinoma of the lung is often a central cavitary mass due to extensive central necrosis. It often appears as cavitating lesions on a chest x-ray. This is the most common lung cancer associated with Pancos tumor and golden pneumonia or lipoid pneumonia. The most important factor affecting prognosis of patients with squamous cell carcinoma of the lung is the stage of presentation. The signs and symptoms are often nonspecific. In some cases of squamous cell carcinoma of the lung, production and secretion of parathyroid hormone-related peptide by the neoplastic cells can cause hypercalcemia of malignancy. For this reason, some patients with squamous cell carcinoma of the lung can present with signs and symptoms similar to those seen in hyperparathyroidism. For patients with non-small cell lung cancer, the initial management is largely determined by the stage of the disease. Patients diagnosed in clinical stage 1 or 2 should be assessed if they are surgical candidates. Those patients who are surgical candidates should undergo resection and pathologic staging. Pathologic stage 1A requires only surveillance further on. Pathological stage 1B and stage 2 or 3 require adjuvant chemotherapy. If there are positive margins or histopathology significant for recurrence, postoperative radiotherapy or re-resection followed by adjuvant chemotherapy followed by surveillance should be done. If the patient is not a surgical candidate, serotactic brachyradiotherapy or definitive radiotherapy followed by surveillance should be the approach. If patients are diagnosed in clinical stage 3 or further, a multidisciplinary approach is required. For patients with early stage disease, surgical resection offers the best opportunity for cure while concurrent chemoradiotherapy is preferred for those with more extensive intrathoracic disease. In contrast, patients with advanced disease are managed palliatively with systemic therapy and or local palliative modalities. Remember, the key features of squamous cell carcinoma with the mnemonic squamous, smoker, central, and surgical candidate when presenting in stage 1 or 2. An abnormal structure formed by concentric layers of epithelial cells surrounding a keratin matrix secreted by the cells can be seen here. This is termed as a keratin pearl. It's associated with well-differentiated squamous cell carcinoma. Nests of neoplastic squamous cells with nuclear atypia surround prominent keratin pearls. Components of non-keratinizing basal cell tumor cells can be seen as well. This carcinoma is moderately differentiated and keratinizing. A whole mount section through the endobronchial exophytic squamous cell carcinoma of the lung can be seen in this picture. Cytology specimen shows 
The typical appearance of squamous cell carcinoma of the lung. The malignant cell has an enlarged hypochromatic nucleus and darkly staining cytoplasm with an irregular configuration, including a cytoplasmic tail. Peripherally located squamous cell carcinoma with extensive central necrosis and cavitation can be seen here in this gross picture. Bilobectomy specimen showing a centrally located endobronchial squamous cell carcinoma associated with post-obstructive bronchiectasis is seen here. High magnification photomicrograph showing intercellular bridges or desmosomes, which appear as refractile striations between distinct cytoplasmic borders. Low magnification photomicrograph showing marked keratinization in a squamous cell carcinoma of the lung. Keratin appears as a waxy, darkly staining eosinophilic cytoplasm in this high powered photomicrograph of a keratinizing squamous cell carcinoma of the lung. Primary squamous cell carcinoma arising from a major bronchus causing complete occlusion of the bronchus and partial occlusion of the trachea.